This is the Star Glow filter from the company called Case. This filter has been designed in collaboration with Alan Wallace, a fellow YouTuber and a very talented landscape astrophotographer. The main purpose of this filter is to accentuate and bring out the brighter and larger stars in your wild field astrophotography images and also make them uh, add this kind of a glowy effect to them, which I gotta say I really dig a lot. So in this video, I'm going to show you all about this filter, how to use it. I'm going to show you some sample images so you can know exactly what to expect if you decide to purchase one of these for yourself. So yeah, let's get started. So the filter itself comes in this nice white sort of leather pouch with a magnetic uh, sort of opening here or magnetic clip, I should say. I don't know if it's fake leather or real leather, but it definitely has this kind of a premium feel to it. And inside we have the filter itself in this sort of a protective uh, plastic pouch. And when I take it off, uh, it is what I have shown you in the intro of this video, a solid piece of glass, uh, a rectangular piece of glass. This filter is a 100 by 100 millimeters and it is designed to fit a popular uh, filter holders for your lens. At first glance, it might seem that this is completely clear, but if you look closely enough, you can discover some very, very fine texture to this filter, which is responsible for this, this effect that it brings into your images. The filter can be mounted in a lot of different ways. The most obvious one would be, like I said, to mount it in a square filter holder into your camera, just slide it in into the slot and just like that, the filter is installed. And this actually is not the way that I use this filter. It requires you to have the filter holder, which you might not already have. And if you don't, it might be an, another expense because it does not come with the filter. And also during it this way, you are leaving this filter on for the entire duration of your exposures, which might result in the effect of the star glow being a little bit too strong, which I will show you in those uh, sample images in just a moment. The other thing that you can do is you can also, let me just take it off, you can just not use the filter holder at all and just hold this filter in front of the camera. You can just hold it close to the close to the lens, in front of the lens, and while your camera is taking exposures on a tripod or on a tracker, just hold it like this, make sure you don't touch and accidentally, uh, you know, nick the camera because it will result in blurry images. You can just hold it like this and then you don't need the filter holder. Also, you can hold it in front of the lens for not the entire duration of the exposure. And this is what I am doing. You can hold it, for instance, for half of the duration of the exposure and then just quickly, you know, move it away. And because this filter is completely made of this kind of glass material, I suppose it's glass, it doesn't have any edges to it. So if you just take it away like that, it doesn't result in any visible artifacts showing up in your images. And also because it doesn't have any frame around it, you can also just slide it in sort of halfway into the filter holder like that, because uh, as it uh, adds a nice effect to the sky, it can cause uh, too much sort of softness and blurring into your foreground, especially if you want to leave it on for the entire duration of the exposures, in my opinion and in my ex experience, it leads to uh, too much of the softness creeping into your foreground, which again, I will show you in just a moment. But it's also another option to mount this filter. And also, from what I can tell, this filter is uh, completely symmetrical. So it doesn't matter if you hold it like this, or if you hold it like this, or if you hold it, you know, uh, right side up, upside down, this side or this side, it's completely symmetrical from what I can tell. So this is nice because you don't need to fumble with it in the darkness and figuring out which way to mount it. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let's jump into the computer. Let me show you some sample images so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna show you some samples with the filter, without the filter, with the filter on, with the filter halfway through the exposure taken away. And again, the, the act of taking it away doesn't cause any artifacts as you will see. And yeah, let's jump into the computer. All right, so the first image that I'm showing you right here is without the filter whatsoever. And as you can see, it's pretty hard to tell what kind of stars do I see in this shot. Uh, you can uh, recognize that right here we have Orion, right here we have Pleiades. But if I were to ask you which one of these stars is Sirius and Capella, one of the two brightest stars in the entire night sky, you will probably have trouble discerning which ones are these. So 
Uh, let's jump into the second image, which we, is taken with using the star glow filter for half of the exposure. And as you can see immediately, the framing is almost exactly the same. Like the framing is the same, the camera settings are the same. The sky just moves a tiny bit between these two shots, obviously. So again, without the filter, and with the filter applied for half of the exposure. And immediately you can see that the brighter stars are popping up. You can see that they uh, also have their natural color brought out, really. You see that the bill juice is right here, which is nice and yellow. You can see the entire sort of four corners of the Orion constellation. You can see the Orion's belt. You can see the V-shaped asterism here in Taurus, the sort of yellowish-orange uh, Aldebaran. You can see the Pleiades, and right here we have Capella, right here we have Sirius, and again to show you the image without the filter, all of these is kind of lost. You cannot even see that the Taurus is right here. You need to look really hard to notice that. So I think this star glow effect is, is really, really nice. Uh, and this the third image is again the filter applied but for the entire duration of the shot. And if we cycle between the two, this is halfway and then the entire exposure. So as you can see, the effect is even stronger right here. I think in my opinion, it's a bit too strong and especially look at the foreground right here. So again, half of the exposure time and then total exposure time. The foreground starts to become uh, too soft uh, in, my, in my opinion and to my taste, I think uh, leaving it for half of the exposure is the optimum. And you can bring uh, back some of the clarity and some of the sharpness of the foreground here using clarity and dehaze sliders. But let me actually show it to you on a different example. So if we go to my uh, to images from my recent trip to the mountains, which is here. And let's take a look at these images. So again, this image is taken without the filter at all. Again, we have the Orion up here, but it's a bit hard to notice, especially if you are an average person that doesn't know much about the night sky. And in comparison, this is the image taken with the filter applied for half of the exposure. Again, the brighter stars are really popping out. Here is Betelgeuse, again, nice and yellow. Here is Sirius, very, very large right here in this frame. And if you look at the foreground, it is a bit softer than here. Here we can go to the uh, sort of comparison view and we can take a look at these mountains. So again, this is with the star glow and this is without the star glow. And it's a fair bit sharper right here, but I think it's it's acceptable also. It, it gives this kind of a dreamy look to the image. Uh, it doesn't look too blurry. It just has this kind of a dreamy kind of, um, uh, I don't know, very, very, very pleasant look in my opinion. And like I said, you can actually bring back some of it using clarity and dehaze. So let me just bring back some clarity, look at the mountains and then dehaze again, really bringing back this sort of clarity and uh, lack of haziness, uh, if you will, to, to these mountains. And you can ap apply it selectively using a mask in Photoshop or whatever if you want these to affect the night sky. Also, if you look at this image, for instance, you can see that there is sort of uh, on the back side of the framing that I showed you before, like behind my back, and you can immediately probably spot the Big Dipper asterism, the very, very uh, sort of popular and well-known asterism of image of, of stars. It is right here. I actually taken, I have actually taken a 360 panorama in that location. And if you wonder, this is also something that I wanted to touch on. There is no issue with stitching panoramas in PTGUI. If you have your images with the star glow effect, there is no issue with, with the ability to find control points and stitch your panorama. And also if you're doing a panorama and you are taking like 50 shots in order to complete like a 360 panorama around you, uh, you might wonder, okay, how I'm gonna pull this off if I want to keep this filter only for half of the exposure time? Well, I just counted in my head, like I had 15 seconds exposures and I was just counting to seven, like one, two, three. And this is of course a not very consistent way of doing that because humans cannot count in their heads consistently. But again, even with this lack of complete consistency in the amount of time that the filter was applied to my images, there's no issue in stitching and there are no kind of visible differences in between these images if you look at the panorama as a whole. And it is a bit tedious to kind of hold it and count and take it away and then another image, hold it, take it away, count, etc, etc. It's a bit tedious to do it for 
a huge panorama, but I think it really pays off because especially in panoramas, those stars are really, really tiny in the final image and making them pop out like this and being able for an average person to discern some well-known constellations is a really cool kind of added sort of value to your astro images. And here are a couple of panoramas that I have produced out of that trip to the mountains. I think they look absolutely phenomenal. These are one of my best uh, astral landscape sort of images. And it all is thanks to this filter and also hydrogen alpha filter to add some nebulosity, but that's a topic for another day. So again, to summarize, I believe that using a filter like this can really uh, make your images stand out because I don't see a lot of people doing that. It can really help you uh, with your with your wide field compositions. And I actually made a video a while back, a short video on how to accentuate on uh, certain bigger stars and make those constellations be more apparent in your images, how to do it completely in post-production in Photoshop. But this is manual work and these are arbitrary changes to your images, which I don't really like, to be honest. And using a filter like this gives you a more organic, more pleasant look. And it is applied across the board for the entire image. You don't need to do any sort of manipulation in Photoshop, which which I really like that, that I, I can just take my image and in right in camera, I have the effect that I want uh, as to how my stars are looking in my images. The only problem with this filter is that it is really hard to get one. They are often out of stock. The, you need to um, purchase them on Case Filters website. There will be a link down below in the description. This link is, by the way, not affiliated. I am not being paid to make this video by Case or, or anybody, and not even affiliated. So you can follow this link. And if it's out of stock, which I believe it is currently, you can subscribe, uh, you can put your email in a box and they will send you an email when there is a new drop of these filters and you can purchase it then. And by the way, this is exactly how I got my filter. It was out of stock. I put my email, I got the email, I bought it and I received it very, very shortly. So I would recommend you to do the same. So this is everything for me for this video. I hope you liked it. This is how I have been able to produce my latest images. And by the way, if you want to check out my more of my images, you can follow me on my Instagram or Astrobin. Relevant links will be down below in the description. If you like this video, please leave it a like. I would appreciate it as always. And also you can consider subscribing to my channel because I will be posting more videos like this. And yeah, hopefully see you in one of my future videos. Bye-bye.